Welcome. We are not in the meadow for worship today. We are here in the sanctuary at Oakland Cambridge Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of the congregation, I do welcome you. Let us take a moment now to quiet ourselves in heart, mind, and body, that we might be open to the sacred presence within and around us. share a reading from 1 Corinthians 13, a familiar passage to many of us, but just prior to that, the beginning of that famous chapter that Paul writes, he offers this line, but strive, he says, for the greater gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. And then he begins his words, and concludes chapter 13 with the, this famous line. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. A couple stands before their family and friends. They're holding hands. They're gazing into each other's teary eyes. And a friend of the couple comes forward, stands by them, and then reads from 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. How many weddings have we been to? How many wedding meditations have been offered based on this reading over the centuries? I'd say statistically, lots. It's been read at almost every wedding that I've officiated at as a minister over 35 years. Frederick Buechner says of 1 Corinthians 13, These are words as familiar as they are like coins, worn smooth with long handling. After a while, it is hard to tell where they came from or what they are worth. The ironic thing about Paul's famous passage on love is that it has nothing to do with marriage at all. It was not written for a couple on their wedding day, Paul was writing to a community of early followers of the risen Christ who lived in the ancient Greek city of Corinth. The Corinthians were in the midst of, this will surprise you, a conflict over spiritual gifts, arguing among themselves over which was the most important one. There were those who spoke in tongues who felt theirs was a superior spiritual gift, which separated them from the rest of the community. Throughout 1 Corinthians, Paul is writing to these followers, trying to heal their rift by instructing them on how to live together as one in the body of Christ. Paul reminds them that there are a variety of spiritual gifts, but there is one spirit who gives them all. And as he brings chapter 12 to a close, Paul lists some of those gifts that God has given to be shared among the community for the benefit of all. But then he writes this rhetorical question. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? I'm not sure if Paul was prone to sarcasm, but you can almost hear him reading between the lines say, of course not, before he launches in to his famous chapter 13. But before he begins with those words that are familiar to us at the beginning of chapter 13, if I speak in the, to in the tongues of mortals and of angels, Paul writes a very important transitional sentence, and one that is seldom read, but I think is important for us to remember. As he is teaching them about the many various spiritual gifts that they desire to obtain, 
Paul says, but strive for the greater gift. And I will show you still a more excellent way. And the excellent way that Paul wants to show them is the way of love. And that form of love that Paul was speaking about was agape. This was perhaps the most radical form of love known in the Greek world. It was a love that you extended to all people, whether family members or distant strangers. C.S. Lewis referred to it as gift love, the highest form of Christian love. But it also appears in other religious traditions as the idea of metta, or universal loving kindness in Buddhism. While all these different forms of love that were known in the culture at that time show up in one way or another throughout the New Testament, it is agape that Paul is using and referring to in chapter 13. Agape love is the more excellent way that Paul wants to show the Corinthians as followers of Christ. And in that way, us to pursue in our life together as the body of Christ. And why wouldn't we want to pursue the more excellent way of love? Well, for one, it is a very difficult and challenging way to pursue in our relationships. It demands we grow and mature in our love for God and one another, including strangers and enemies, putting away our childish self-centered ways and our worldview as we learn to love one another as Christ commanded us to do, modeling it in his own life for us. Jan Richardson, who I've referred to on numerous occasions, writes in her blog post, The Painted Prayer Book, these words of agape love. She says that it is always risky because we cannot enter into it without being changed, altered, transformed. Loving is never just about opening our heart. It is about being willing to have our heart become larger as we make more room for people and stories and experiences we never imagined holding. It is about being willing to have a heart become deeper as we move beyond the surface layers of our assumptions and prejudice and habits in order to truly see and receive what and who is before us. We need to think about that in this pandemic world we are living in together. You know, over the years, I've tried to relate Paul's words to couples getting married through different stories about learning to love one another throughout life. And while this passage really isn't about marriage, I did want to share a story about a marriage of sorts of two people wed together geographically, politically, and religiously, who are trying to figure out how to learn to love one another so they can live in peace with one another. What is love? Well, let me tell you about a group that is trying to pursue that more excellent way. This group is called Parents Circle. It is a grassroots organization for Palestinians and Israelis who have lost loved ones due to the ongoing conflict between them. Caroline Lewis, who is an associate professor of biblical preaching at Luther Seminary in Minneapolis, was at one time leading a pilgrimage to the Holy Lands. And the two representatives from this organization spoke to her group. Both men were fathers, one a Palestinian, the other Israeli. Both had lost daughters because of the ongoing conflict between those two countries. Lewis said, we had a very honest discussion about the conflict and about life before and after the separation wall. One father said, no wall, no matter how high, can stop two kinds of people, one determined suicide bomber and the other determined peacemaker. They each went through their own moments of wondering how life could possibly carry on 
given the death of their children due to such senseless, mindless fighting. Lewis reflected on the story saying, you know, they could have chosen revenge to ease their pain, but instead realized that the only way forward was to talk to each other. In each other, she says, they found the way to carry on because in their own words, our blood is the same, our same color, our tears are just as bitter. They found a way to carry on that chose peace instead of revenge, conversation instead of fear, life instead of death, because it is not our destiny to kill each other in this holy land. She added, at stake for both fathers was peace. Simple as that. This is the gospel. This is love. Michael Main in his book writes, or in his book, Learning to Dance, writes, the opposite of love is hate, is not hate, but indifference, the failure to care or to care enough. It is want of imagination, a lack of empathy, an inability or refusal to see in another human being, a creature, as frail and easily hurt as I can be. Through their common yet painful stories of death, the death of their daughters, I think both these fathers found what Paul was talking about when he said, let me show you still a more excellent way. They found that by learning to love one another. So what is love? In any form of relationship, individually or communally, as Paul says, it is patient and kind. It hopes all things. It believes all things. It endures all things, even a pandemic. Agape love never ends. And that, my friend, is the greatest spiritual gift of all. Amen. Friends, may the peace and love of Christ rule in your hearts, and may the grace of God be with you and keep you, now and forever. 